Have you ever received a highly religious or even transphobic ad before a YouTube video? Perhaps it's Ben Shapiro, perhaps it's a praying app, or perhaps it's even a literal Bible verse. Well, it's not just you. Let's take a deeper dive, shall we? In this video, we're going to talk about this phenomenon. We're going to talk about how I decided to combat it in the most unusual fashion, and we're going to talk about what it means for our community. Because my findings have uncovered some very interesting information about how YouTube treats the queer community, and I think you're gonna to wanna to hear about it. Kia ora guys, guys, and Emmy pals. I'm Alistair Wonderwind, your favorite Kiwi trans girl, and I've been scheming. I'm always scheming, but this time it has been particularly dastardly. I, of course, am a genius. So, when I started receiving comments about how some questionable ads were playing before my videos, I got to thinking, what could be done about the situation? What is within my power to do? And after some deliberation, I decided that the best way to figure out what was going on was to run an ad campaign of my own and see just what's involved in pushing an ad to a highly targeted audience like mine. I'll tell you a bit more about my ad later, but for now, I want to tell you about the philosophy behind it. Because this wasn't actually just an opportunity to dunk on transphobia or to give the trans community an epic win to remember. This was a full blown investigation. You see, any ad I run to advertise my YouTube channel, I'm gonna want to target at the queer community. So I'm gonna wanna push my ad towards trans people, towards gay people, towards people who celebrate Pride Month, towards anyone I think might watch my videos. That's why I even included government personnel in my ad targeting because I know the FBI have been watching me for years. Anyway, because of the nature of my and your identity, Targeting my own ad campaign at my own community is actually targeting an ad at an exclusive minority group. And if I can do it, who else do you reckon can? So that's a major motivation of this whole exercise to determine just how easy it is to target an ad at our minority group and see whether or not this whole transphobic ad debacle is just bad luck or something more sinister. Let's dive in. After, and I'm not kidding, five months of planning, I grabbed Chloe, I grabbed my camera, and we went out and made the long drive from the North Shore all the way over to West Auckland to Western Springs. A nice little park that would be quiet enough to do a little bit of filming at, while also being, you know, quite posh, professional looking, very pretty, and full of some fun wildlife. Together, we spent about five hours walking all over this park and doing take after take after take to get the perfect shot. This took especially long because every single f***ing time Chloe saw a bird, she had to run away with my camera and take a close up shot of it. But anyway, as an ad campaign, I wanted this to look as professional and polished as possible. Because while the two main motives were A, dunk on transphobes, and B, investigate this conspiracy. There was a third motive, and there's not really any point in hiding it. It's an ad campaign advertising my channel on the back of a social cause. My YouTube channel is my livelihood and my business, and of course I want to grow it. So naturally, I want to make a good impression and get absolutely everything I can out of this ad campaign. But after a lot of work in the tireless heat and a whole lot of planning and editing, this is what we came up with. I'm trans, and I think you're pretty cool. That's it. That's literally the ad. The short version of it anyway. The long version is that some of my viewers have been getting transphobic ads before my videos, and I figured the best way to prevent that is to fight fire with fire. So, I filmed an ad of my own, sold my soul to YouTube, and if you're watching this, that means I succeeded. I beat the transphobes to your video. Mission accomplished. If you want to check out my YouTube channel, it's linked right here. I'm pretty well known for doing crazy things like this. But otherwise, it's okay. I'm mostly just doing this so that you don't have to see transphobia. Pretty convincing, huh? I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. In my personal opinion, I think this is something of a marketing masterstroke. Sometimes my genius generates gravity. I'm knocking out three birds with one stone. This is great. I get to dunk on transphobia in a hilarious way. I get to investigate an issue that's been bothering me for ages, and I get to promote my YouTube channel. And if I do say so myself, I think it's a catchy enough idea, and I think it's enough of a shock to see a trans person advertising that people may actually overcome their general hatred of advertisements and watch the whole thing. So I decided to go all in on this thing. Cha-ching! There's not much point throwing a few coins at a wall. If you want something like this to stick, you need to summon up a wad of cash. You need to come up with an actual advertising budget. And you need to have a plan. So, I set aside five 
thousand dollars for this. In for a f***ing penny, in for a f***ing pound. Might as well put in as much as I can afford into this budget. Besides, this is nothing. I spend twice as much as this on furry lesbians every year. Now I just want to jump in and say of course a huge thank you to all of my members, the commissioned officers in my queer army. I'm here to take risks and do amazing things for you and for our community and you make things like this possible. If you want to become a commissioned officer in my queer army, you can hit that join button down below and contribute to the cause. Anyway, let me walk you through how you set up an ad campaign because it really is not easy. This here is Google Ads. If I'm being completely honest, it's cancer. It, it really sucks. It's Google's comprehensive platform on which you can run ad campaigns on all of Google's sites. But of course, for our purposes, we only care about YouTube. Now, you can make all sorts of ads here. Bumper ads, homepage ads, and most importantly to us, in-stream ads. These are the ads you'll be most familiar with. These are the ads that run pre, mid, and post-roll on the YouTube videos that you watch unless you're a good kitten and have YouTube premium. These are the ads that absolutely f***ing infuriate you. So that's what we want to do, obviously. I decided to make a five second skippable ad with a 30 second full runtime. Now it's a little bit complicated to set all this up and I don't want to bore you, so we're just going to go ahead and skip ahead to the interesting part. These two little sections here, audience and keywords. This is generally how YouTube targets the ad. Now, audience is great for big advertisers like companies or whoever, but it doesn't really help us. And in fact, I ended up completely foregoing it. The audience options are pretty much all pre-selected audience demographics. Things like makeup lover or women's fashion enthusiast. They don't have things like trans or LGBT or gay, but they do interestingly have new pet, which is pretty much every recently cracked egg, am I right? <laughs> Come to me and I will make you eat cat food. But anyway, there's actually good reason for YouTube not having any LGBTQ audience presets. And it's something I've been thinking about quite a lot. I've been pondering it a lot so far. You see, out of curiosity, I decided to see what other sites do when you tried to target minorities. And so I set up ad accounts for several platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Reddit, for example, just doesn't let you do it, period. And there are a few ad sites like that. They will just straight up not let you. And I actually think that's excellent. They have a policy specifically against targeting minorities, and I think that's how it should be. And this is actually why, and I haven't talked about this so far, but this is why I actually had a sneaking suspicion that YouTube might not approve my ad at all. <laughs> Aside from it just being generally cringe. YouTube supposedly manually reviews all ads to ensure that they're above board, and there are pretty specific guidelines in many countries about who you can advertise to, which made it all the more interesting that when I started typing in keywords like trans, femboy, gay, submissive, and pride, that they actually got approved. You see, this keyword section is not specifically about targeting an audience, but actually about placement of your ad. In selecting these keywords, I'm telling YouTube that I want my ad to be placed in front of videos that match these keywords, thus putting my ad in front of the queer community and serving my ad up to a minority, while also not technically targeting that minority. Perhaps because I'm not specifically targeting that audience, but instead placing my ad on videos that they're likely to watch, this is some sort of loophole on a technicality. Or at least that's what I thought until I actually tried to make my own LGBTQ audience category and it got approved. So I mean, who f***ing knows at this point? I'll, I'll talk about this more in depth a little bit later and what it means for our investigation into advertising at a minority group. The important part is that my ad and all of my selections and targeting was approved without a hitch. Not a single concern. Which is interesting as well because my ad was pretty openly critical of YouTube and I didn't think they would be on board with that. We were home and away to the races and all I had to do was set a date and wait for the campaign to go live. And it ran. And it got impressions. And it got clicks. And it got views. It was targeted to my keywords. YouTube even kindly gave me statistics on how many views my ad was getting based on what keyword. It was going so far as to help me serve my ad to a targeted minority, which is very interesting. So my hypothesis was correct. YouTube will in fact allow you to target ads at minority groups and it will even go so far as to help you do it better. But unfortunately, this is where the fairy tale ad campaign ends because 
there was a problem. Even though I budgeted and allocated $5,000 for this, YouTube had other plans. I was really quite excited to run it out and see what would happen, but after a couple of days, YouTube hit me with the... And you know, that's fine. I don't mind verifying. In fact, I'm kind of surprised they even asked for that because my Google Ads account is linked to my YouTube account for which they already have my name, all of my address details, and my tax information. But you know, it's whatever. I'll fill it out and verify and we'll get back to it, but... Oh good, it wants to dox me. Right, well, yeah, that's pretty much the end of that. If you didn't quite get that, Basically, YouTube wants to verify me so it can say sponsored by f when someone hovers over the ad information. And it's like my full f***ing dead name too. The one that's in the phone books. So anyone sees that, they can just f***ing come over and visit my house. So obviously that's off the table. That's absolutely not, I can't have that happening. Now I looked for ways and scratched and clawed to try and figure out a way around it, but there's really nothing I can do. Either it puts your full name or your company name. So unfortunately, until I officially launch One to One and Limited, that's gonna be the end of my advertising journey. There's no way around it. In the end, it only managed to spend a little over $100 out of my $5,000 budget, which is a little bit f***ing rude if you ask me. Luckily, I at least got the rest of my budget back, so it's not completely wasted. I can use it for other things. But like, that's really f***ing annoying. I've been planning this for six months. So judging by these metrics, I had gained about 100 subscribers from $100 spent, so you could feasibly extrapolate that to 5,000 subscribers from $5,000, roughly, by the time my campaign would have fully run its course. That would have been a healthy boost to my figures. I'd be going into 2025 with 60,000 subscribers instead of 55. But nevertheless, while the ad campaign failed, the investigation was a resounding success and the dunking on transphobia was at least a partial success too. So then, what have I learned? What are my conclusions, hmm? Well, most importantly, I have learned that it is entirely possible to target your ad at a minority group if you're smart, well-versed, and know the sort of keywords that surround their videos. That is entirely possible, and YouTube didn't really have any issue with it, and in fact, they helped me with it. However, the jury is still out on YouTube's moderation tendencies. Now, looking at this pragmatically, it is entirely possible that the reason my keywords were approved is because a manual reviewer watched my ad and saw that I was a member of that minority group. I don't really have any way to prove or disprove that in any way, and there's no way to know for sure without speaking directly to YouTube, which is nigh impossible. So it's just as likely that that is the case as it is that YouTube just doesn't check ads at all. All I know for sure is that it's slightly concerning that audience targeting for minority groups is even an option. It bothers me a little bit for sure because I feel like there are stones left unturned. But like I said, without specifically talking to someone at YouTube, which is impossible, there's no way to tell. I mean, unless some random vigilante company wants to team up with me and make a dummy ultra-religious Trojan horse ad and just see what happens. See if YouTube will let them. <laughs> Aside from some crazy outcome like that, this is pretty much the end of the investigation. I at least hope I've helped to inform you a bit more about the nature of advertising on this platform and what goes on behind the scenes of every ad that you see. My best guess as to what happened with all of these comments is that perhaps on the videos of mine applicable, there was a keyword or two that happened to be mutual between the trans community and the ultra-religious communities. I'm just not sure. My gut feeling is that these aren't malicious ads but I could be wrong. <laughs> it really does bother me that I couldn't run the full ad campaign. I literally, I fucking budgeted for it. But you know, like I said earlier, I'm not here to be a reactor or a commentary channel. I'm here to take risks and be a fucking living legend for our community and do amazing things. And well, the unfortunate nature of taking risks like that is that Sometimes you win some, and sometimes you lose some, and I suppose on this day, I've lost this one. But I thought, at the very least, you might like to hear about it and hear what I've been scheming for the last six months. Because with that loss came some interesting insights into how this platform works. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, a huge thank you to all my members, and I will see you next week.